When you're using HTMX, something has to trigger the AJAX request to the server. And in this video, we're going to look at the HX trigger attribute, and we're going to look at two of the non-standard events that are supported by HX trigger. And these two events are the revealed event and the intersect event. So let's get started. I have the documentation open on the HX trigger attribute, which I'll link below the video. And the HX trigger attribute supports all of the standard events that we can have on a web page. For example, the click event or the key up event, the mouse over event, the submit event, and many more. Now, if we scroll down in this documentation, we have a section on non standard events here. So, HTMX supports some additional non standard events, including the load event, which is triggered on load, which can be useful for lazy loading, as it says here. But we're going to look at the two below that the revealed and intersect events. When these are fired, it's going to send the AJAX request to the server. In this video, we're going to see a toy example of how these work and what the difference is between revealed and intersect. So I have a Django project open here. It has a single view which loads the index.html template. So let's go to that template. And this is a template that has a header of WorldCat directory. And below that, we have a paragraph tag and we're rendering some lorem ipsum text to the page. And finally, below that paragraph, we have an image here of height and width 400, and that links to a random image of a cat from this cat as a service API. Now, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to start this project up by running python manage.py run server. And once we have this running, we're going to take a look at the page as it is here with this lorem ipsum and the picture of the cat. So let's go to the page now. And you can see the page as it is here, we have the header and then a lot of lorem ipsum text and then we have a random cat at the bottom. And this is an image of 400 by 400 pixels. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to show the effect of this revealed trigger in HTMX. If we go to the documentation, you can see that revealed is triggered when an element is scrolled into the viewport. And this is also useful for lazy loading because you don't need to load everything up front. So what I'm going to demonstrate in this video is that when we first land on this page, we don't see the image of the cat. We need to scroll down to see that cat. And when we do see that, it can fire this revealed event and trigger any AJAX requests to the server if we have that trigger set up. And this is good for lazy loading because if we have any associated data that we want to load, we can do it only when the cat is scrolled into the viewport. Therefore, that can save some resources on our server because we're not going to load everything up front. Some users might not scroll down to that section of the site. But when we do see the cat with this revealed event, we can then send the AJAX request using HTMX and get back some HTML, which we're going to swap in on the right hand side. So let's now see how to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to return this cat details.html template that contains a table with two columns, the name and the age of the cat. And below that, we have a body containing a single row with the name and the age of the cat. So what we're going to do is create a view that's going to be called by HTMX and it's going to return this template to the front end. And that's going to be swapped into the document at the right hand side of this image. Now we're using Bootstrap, which is loaded into my base.html template. We have a link to Bootstrap here, as well as a link to the CDN for HTMX as well. What we're going to do in index.html is we're going to create another column to the right hand side of this image where we can display the table that's going to be coming back from our HTMX request. So what I'm going to do to start with is create a new view in this Django application to return this template. So let's go to views.py and we're going to define another template here called cat details that will take the request object in Django. And what we're going to do in the body of this function is we're going to set up some random names of cats. And at the top, I'm going to import the random module from Python. And we're going to select one of these names at random when we get a request coming into this view. So let's set up a context dictionary here. And the name is what we need to set here. If we look at cat details.html, we're expecting a name and an age in the context. So let's go back to the view and we're going to set the name equal to the random.choice function from that random module. And to the choice function, we pass in a sequence and we're going to pass in the names that we defined above. That's the name of the cat. And we're also going to define that age field. And we're going to set that equal to a random.random .random integer. So the randint function, and we're going to set an age between 1 and 20. Finally, we can render the cat details.html. So I'm going to copy the render statement here. And we're going to render that cat details.html template 
and we need to pass the context into that as well. And this is the function that's going to handle the HTMX request to Django and it's going to return back a table that we're hoping to swap in on the right hand side of the cat image but only when this revealed trigger is fired. So now that we have the view function what we need to do is define a URL that can actually map to that view so let's go to urls.py and below the existing path we're going to pass in another one that's going to link to that cat details view and that has a name of cat details so let's copy that and go to the index.html template what I'm going to do now is add the htmx attributes to this image element that's going to allow it to send an ajax request to Django and get that cat details template when the revealed event is fired. So let's add those attributes now. And in fact, what I'm going to do is add them to the div with the class of column six above the image. So what we're going to do here is add an hx trigger equal to revealed. And I'm going to do this on a new line so that we can see these a little bit better. So the revealed event is what we're listening for. And then when we get that, we're going to send a get request. And we're going to use Django's URL template tag here to link to that cat details URL that we just defined. And we want the content that's coming back from the HTMX request, which is going to be this div here containing a table element. We want to put that on the right hand side of this existing div. So what I'm going to do is create another div just below here with the class of column six from Bootstrap. So this is going to take the right hand side of the page because Bootstrap uses a 12 column grid system. And we're going to give this div at the bottom that we're defining the same attributes actually that we have in the partial that's being returned from the HTMX request. So let's just copy this and we're going to paste that in here. So it's going to have the same column six class and it's also going to have the cat details class. And the ID of this is just going to be details. The same as it is here, which is important because later on we're going to create a small animation or a transition using this and the ID has to be stable between the original content and what's being swapped in here. So we're keeping the same ID when we return that partial. Let's close the div off and we're going to keep that empty when the page first loads because the content that we're going to put in there is part of an HTMX request that we're going to lazy load on the revealed event. So if we want to put a returned div here into this existing div and overwrite the entire div, what we need to do is set the target. So the HX target is going to be the ID of details here. And the swap mechanism with hx swap is going to be outer html we're going to replace the entire div element here with what's coming back from the htmx request so let's now see if this is going to work we're going to save all of these files and head back to the browser and we're going to scroll to the top here and refresh the page when we scroll down when we reveal that cat we're going to see that htmx is going to send the request to the back end and it's going to return this table containing the name and the age from that Django view and that's going to be swapped in to the DOM at the target that we specified in the template. So this is not on the page by default, this is part of an HTMX Ajax request that happens when the cat is revealed. So this reveal event, it only happens when the element is scrolled into the viewport. So we need to scroll down in order to trigger that request. But you can see that this appears very abruptly, it happens instantaneously. We want to add a bit of a transition here, a bit of an animation to make it a little bit smoother and so that we can also see that this is being swapped into the page dynamically as part of an Ajax request from HTMX. So how do we do that? I'm going to keep this simple by going back to the index.html template. So the original div that we have here that we're overwriting with the content that we're getting back from HTMX, I'm going to give that a style tag and set the opacity of that div to zero. So any content in this div will not be visible on the page and by default of course we don't have any content but what we're going to do is copy the style tag here and we're going to go back to the partial template and I'm going to paste this in here and we're going to change the opacity from 0 to 1. So what we're doing when we return this partial is we're going to set the style to make the opacity equal to 1 so that it's visible on the page. Now this is not going to do anything by default. If we go back to the page, refresh the page and scroll down you can see that we still get the same instantaneous effect. So what we need to do is add a transition here that's going to create a small delay in this appearing on the page. And not just a delay, but it's going to fade into the page using the ease in animation property in CSS. So what we're going to do is define some CSS code in the index.html file. And in fact, let's go to the base.html file and at the top, within the head tag, I'm going to define a style tag where we can write some CSS here. And we're going to target the element with the cat details class. And that is going to be this element here that we can see that contains that opacity of zero. 
and that is changed to the opacity of one on the partial response. What we're going to do is we're going to set the animation here and we can use the transition CSS property in order to do that. And we're going to apply this transition to all styles and we're going to do this within a one second time window and we're going to use the ease in property here. And that is all we need to do if we go back to the page and refresh this page. And if we scroll down, you can see that the table now comes into the page, but it doesn't do so instantly. There is that ease in animation effect where it's slowly being converted from opacity zero to opacity one. And that happens over the window of one second here, as we specify in the CSS. If we increase this to five seconds, we're gonna see that this happens much more slowly when we refresh this page. And that takes a little bit longer for the table to become fully visible. So just to hammer home the point here, the HX trigger attribute has this revealed event. And when an object is scrolled into the viewport and therefore seen by the users, that's going to trigger that and then trigger any Ajax requests that are defined on that element. Now I want to show a very closely related trigger event in HTMX, that's the intersect event. And like revealed, this is fired when an element intersects the viewport, but this takes two additional options. We have a root selector and we have a threshold, which is a number between zero and one. This indicates the amount of intersection to fire the event on. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna define the intersect event and we're going to give it a threshold here of 0 0.8, which means that we're only gonna trigger the Ajax request from HTMX when 80% of the element where this is defined is visible on the viewport. So let's see an example of that just now. If we go back to the index.html template, this is the div containing our HTMX attributes. What we're gonna do is change the trigger from revealed to intersect. So let's set that equal to intersect, and we're gonna set the threshold here equal to 0 0.8. Let's save this and go back to our page and scroll to the top and refresh this page. When we scroll down now, you can see that the table is not loaded as soon as we see any part of this image where these HTMX attributes are defined. Instead, we have to wait until 80% of the element has been scrolled into the viewport. And that's because of this threshold of 0.8 here. So what we can do is we can scroll down a little bit further and then we can gradually see that the table is coming onto the page now in that five second window. And that's because at this point we have 80% or more of the image visible on the page and that's when the intersect event is fired. So that's the key difference between intersect and revealed. With the revealed event, as soon as the element appears anywhere on the page, it's gonna send the request. But with the intersect event, we can specify a threshold to control when that Ajax request is sent. So this is a little bit more customizable than the revealed event. And that can be useful if you want to trigger Ajax requests to fetch additional information only when a certain amount of an element is visible on the page. And that's basically all for this video. If you want to know more about the revealed event, check out the infinite scroll video I did as part of the HTMX series. The revealed event and the intersect event can be used for infinite scroll because when the last element in a list is revealed on the page, that can then trigger additional requests to fetch more content and that revealed event can always be added to the last element in the content. So that creates that infinite scroll effect. And you could do this infinite scroll type thing on a page like this, where whenever we see the image of the cat, we fetch the table and we also fetch an additional image that can be put below this. And then this infinite scroll can continue forever using this random cat API. But that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.